So when you have a mental breakdown, what do you like to do? I can't believe I'm starting the video like that. Do you like to maybe rest for a bit or have your favourite food or read a bit or listen to some music to calm you down a bit? You know, just that seems to be the usual stuff that you would hear people do when they're feeling a bit down, a bit down on their luck. What I like to do is I like to go in my own little weird world my own little weird mind of what might be in terms of the fandoms i'm part of and the fandoms i choose i feel like a lot of other people do that as well but we don't talk about it because saying i listen to music is just a lot easier for other people to understand for anyone who knows me i am a massive fan um i don't say it out loud but you know from other things that you can see from what i draw um people can tell i'm a massive fan of of classic cartoons cartoons that are made pre the 1950s that golden age of cartoons that has classic characters like mickey mouse betty boot bugs bunny um felix the cow all, all those ones that you would consider to be part of that age and then i like things that are related to that to that but aren't necessarily part of that era so i like bendy and the ink machine and i like uh cuphead because i just think that kind of style um those cartoons anything to do with that i just think it's cool i think it's nice to watch it's simplistic but artistic at the same time it's just different to anything else i just love those cartoons i love the characters my love for those cartoons make me want to study animation as a whole so i have a degree in animation visual effects and i haven't done anything with it since i graduated i've just been here existing basically you know i've just been floating but being obsessed with these characters and these types of cartoons when i was younger it would be weird if i wasn't continuing to be obsessed with them as i got older so i i still am i still like like all this this sort of stuff i don't know what the fandom is actually called i'm not gonna lie i don't have a tumblr account anymore i haven't been on tumblr in ages so i don't know if anything's changed since then so you know i heard some people call it the toontown fandom i heard some people call it you know rubber hose or golden age or whatever i don't know i don't know the official name for whatever this fandom is or liking classic cartoon characters or making stories with them or anything like that so if you know can you please let me know because i don't know what to identify myself as so whenever i'm feeling down or like i said at the beginning had a mental breakdown i would you know go into my little fandom of what other people are doing with these characters and what i would like to imagine what story these characters can be a part of because so far we haven't they've been they've been funny they've been you know what we expect them to be they've just been on a surface level what we expect to be but of course in most fandoms we like to go you know deeper you know this is this is how I go deeper, do like I'm digging, but with the back of my hand. We give them tragic backstories. People give their fandom characters, you know, you know, f lots of emotions and trauma. We just give them all the trauma. It's like the Steven Universe of fandoms. And it's compelling. It's engaging. It's a distraction. You know, it's a distraction from the real world until you have to go back in there and sort your life out. And the reason why I like to imagine what the characters are doing and what and see what other people are doing with those characters while they're writing their own stories about them it's because the real world, specifically Hollywood, is a bit shit at writing content, more content for these characters. There has been good TV shows, there has been the DuckTales reboot, there has been, um, there was another one in my head but I can't remember it now. But I'm kind of talking about movies, so one of the most recent classic cartoon based movies that's come out has been Space Jam 2. Now I love Space Jam 2 but I love it for all the wrong reasons. It is so hilariously bad in every single way but we were given big chunkers so I have to like it apparently. The actual title of the movie is called Space Jam 2 a new legacy so when i first saw that title before the movie came out i thought for some reason it would have something to do with tiny tunes tiny tune adventures because that's a new legacy of looney tunes but it doesn't it includes the exact same characters from the first movie and it kind of does the same thing um but um it's on the internet the looney tunes breaks the internet <laughs> there's also other classic cartoon reboots that have come out you know one of the other ones come to mind is woody woodpecker which is 
bad so in terms of movies other than roger rabbit that came out in the 80s at some point i can't really think of any great classic cartoon based movie that has just stuck out as you know oh wow this is really impressive the idea of two town is such a cool concept it's you know it's it's one that i want to explore into a lot more and i feel like you kind of get that sometimes with some tv shows and even you know with video games like cuphead or bending the machine but you know film or whatever you know warner brothers and disney are making uh, with that you know that it doesn't it doesn't happen and there's really no way that we ever get anything like roger rabbit again because it was different characters from different studios just coming together just like that and i don't know whether studios are willing to negotiate to have something like that again despite the fact that myself and a lot of other people would want that as well so even though i'm not working in the animation industry right now despite the fact that i do have a degree i do every now and then like to think okay if i was given millions of dollars or millions of pounds because i live in the uk if i was given a lot of money to write a script for a two town movie or a movie based on a classic cartoon character pre 1950s what would i do what kind of story would this character be in would they interact with any other characters from that time what traumatic experience will they face today what songs would they be singing would it be something kind of i don't know <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. What songs would they be singing? So if I was given a lot of money to write a movie like this, what would I write? I certainly wouldn't write anything along the lines of Space Jam 2 or the Woody Woodpecker movie or anything like that. I just wouldn't do that. I don't know what goes through some of these writers' brains of why they do that. You have a massive log, a history of all these characters on the internet. You can research into what they like, what they dislike, who their enemies are, what are their personal thoughts and feelings about things and you can just write a really good story based off anything and if there's nothing based on that character you can write something completely new you know something something interesting to add to that character that wasn't interesting in the first place you can do anything and then you make stuff you know like oh my god it's big chungus so today i am just going to let you know random ideas i've had in the past that are, is a movie based on a classic animated character and I part of me thinks they're better than Space Jump 2. A lot of these ideas came to me when I was watching other pieces of media so if the story sounds similar then that is that is why. I'm gonna start off with Space Jam 2. What would I write in terms of something for Space Jam 2? Again, the Tiny Toons Adventures, add those characters in. You can maybe add some Animaniacs characters in or any other obscure Warner Brothers characters in there. Just plop some more in and not recycle the old Looney Tunes characters. They can be there, but it's a new legacy and you'd have a made a new legacy, so there's no point. Also, I do not remember if Marvin the Marvin, Marvin the Marvin, <laughs> If Marvin the Martian actually made an appearance in Space Jam 2, I gen he was, was he part of the team? I don't remember where he was. He didn't play very much of a role at all. Which is weird because, you know, Space Jam, it used to be based... The first one was based on aliens. You know, you can stick to aliens and maybe Marvin the Martian could be the villain and you know because they are he's a villain usually but they're also friends and you can resolve it at the end like you've got a sort of you know set up for a movie there I don't understand why you wouldn't use for your alien movie the alien you already have in your cast number two moving on to Disney I was a big fan of House of Mouse don't I remember House of Mouse that was all right that was cool i was going off the roger rabbit thing but it was just disney characters after they film on set all day they just relax at the club and it's reminiscent of what most actors and actresses do in hollywood because as well as performing they're usually working at a fucking restaurant most of the time so it's not shocking to see that one of the biggest characters in the world is working at a restaurant but it was a cool idea one well, you know the best show ever but it was different you can have a tv movie where they reopen the whole thing 
and it could connect to that somehow. Just a grand reopening of the house and mouse and the hijinks that ensue. Make it a little TV musical or just a little TV movie. You know, you made Mickey Donald's Goofy the Three Musketeers. No one asked for that movie and uh, why not make something similar to that movie but a bit relevant to Mickey Mouse's history. Number three. This idea came to me when I was watching Motherland. Has anyone else seen Motherland? Probably not. This is not the right video if you've seen Motherland. Two mothers and one father, like a little friendship group, um, going against these other mothers in a weird, like, slice of life, British comedy way. Those other mothers are a bit more popular and they plan everything like kids birthday parties and things like that and these other three are just a bit they can't do that, they don't do that or they're just a bit you know unlucky in their attempts to do things like that. I don't think I summarised the show pretty well but that's what I gathered from it. But that got me thinking you know you got like Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse and then you got Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck so you got Warner Brothers and Disney these two you know they're still popular aren't they the mickey mouse sensational six and the lonely tunes here they're pretty popular characters you know you can still make merchandise from them but then you've got other classic cartoon characters that haven't really given that much attention recently you've got felix the cat you've got betty boop and you even got woody woodpecker i know there was a movie about him not long ago but I'm not gonna count that, am I? Just showing those three characters a bit down on their luck, trying to get through their life, living in Toontown, seeing what comes next, trying to get jobs, whether that be entertainment-wise or, I don't know, you work at Starbucks or something. Number four, a little mockumentary-inspired show with Mickey, Bugs, Woody and Felix and Betty. Those are the five main classic cartoon characters I can think of at the top of my head that absolutely you know, the most popular at their time. And they're doing some sort of queer eye set up for other tunes in Toontown, just trying to get their lives back together. And they're helping because they're the, they were the most popular at the time and they are still quite rememberable. Number five, the love story of a century with Jessica Rabbit and Roger Rabbit. Now I was about to not talk about this one because I have read the original book based that Who Framed Roger Rabbit was based on, Who Centered Roger Rabbit and I don't like it. It's got transphobic slurs in there. It's got a bit of sexist things in there as well. And Roger and Jessica's relationship wasn't really a relationship in the book. They were not a, really a couple. They were not really an item. Roger was more portrayed as this creepy guy, almost like obsessing over Jessica and Jessica going on a date with him just to, you know, shut him up. The two didn't get together because of love, they got together because of other reasons which I don't think I'll disclose just for spoilers but it ain't a love story. The two didn't love each other in the book which is why I'm so happy with the changes made for Who Framed Roger Rabbit because I don't want whatever is in that book portrayed on screen. It doesn't work. So redo the whole thing, just redo the whole thing and make an epic love story based on two characters that were most beloved from that original Two Town movie. I think they were trying to do it one time, but I can't remember for sure. Let me check that. Okay, I can't find anything. I don't know where I saw it, but I, I was for certain that at some point they were going to make something like that, like a sequel, but it was a, a prequel. So it's not a sequel at all, is it? They're all going to make a prequel. Number six. I label this bullet point Acne Acres because it is talking about, once again, the actual next generation or new legacy of Looney Tunes. So you've got Tiny Tunes Adventures and Animaniacs um, smooshed together for this story. I put down here an Acne Acres inspired movie that has got essences of Ghibli Luca and Miraculous Ladybug, those are just three very different things, aren't they? And I don't know why it becomes so um, posh all of a sudden. The essences of these movies. Just showing life at the Luniversity and is Yakko, Wako and Dot there. You know, you know how I like my Animaniacs, you know how I'm liking. I'm liking the new Animaniacs reboot. You know, I don't care what anyone says, I like it. I like watching it. And I just want more of these characters just 
churn it out don't literally churn it out just think about what you're writing first make something good and then churn it out number seven just a peek just a pinky in the brain movie any any pinky in the brain movie just a concept of a pinky in the brain movie just give it a go now this character for number eight this is something that i want to i really really want you know most people in this toontown rubber hose golden age whatever fandom want something a movie a tv show or anything with Oswald the Lucky Rabbit in it. This lovely character that was pre-Mickey Mouse in 1920s and was taken away and it was given to the Walter Lance Studios, the guys who made Woody Woodpecker, and then somehow Oswald just faded out of existence because he wasn't popular anymore. He was then in the epic Mickey games and I'm not going to explain the entire backstory about those games, you just look it up yourself. But this is a popular character that Disney has gotten the rights back for it, but they haven't really done much since the games, except for added, you know, just a cameo here and there. Which is not enough. You can do Oswald reuniting with Mickey, you could do Oswald reuniting with Toontown in general, because at the time, he would have been friends with Felix the Cat if he went to the Walter Lance Studios after Walter Lance Studios gained the right to Oswald Lucky Rabbit, he would have known Woody Woodpecker. He would have known all these characters. All these other characters would have missed him when he was gone. You can make him a villain as well. In Kingdom Hearts games, there is a character called the Heartless. It has a bunny, weird bunny looking exterior as if it was a shadow of a bunny, of a rabbit. And Oswald in the Epic Mickey games was taken away to somewhere else after he less lost popularity of the public. And because he's not in the public eye anymore, he has no heart anymore. He's heartless. I think we can connect the dots here. It can be emotionally epic seeing this character go from not being around anymore to just being here. You could do so much with Oswald the Lucky Rabbit and I I wish somebody at Disney would pick it up so just putting him in little cameos here and there just meh like that. Oh let's pop him there that'll be enough for them won't it? No it won't. Stop it. I can't remember what number I'm on. Number nine? Number nine? Number nine. I made a video ages ago called Mickey should have a gay daughter and in that I do this horrible picture of what I think Mickey Mouse's daughter would look like. And I did that video because I had an idea that, you know, in terms of the main characters, the main cartoon characters in The Sensational Six in Disney, um, Goofy has a son called Max, Donald adopts his three nephews, and there isn't a lot of really small girl characters, really. You know, you do have Darkwing Duck, who does has Gosling, who does has Gosling, great. You have Webby, um, you have uh, Pistol, which is Pete's daughter, but you know, I, I think it would be nice that be for the main three, the, arguably the three that are like representing Dizzy the most, Mickey, Donald and Goofy. Goofy and Donald already have sons or nep nephews, adopted sons. You know, Mickey should have a daughter and that daughter you know, could be a Disney princess, the princess of Disney. Yeah, I'm thinking all these ideas here, Disney, come on. And in the video, I also said that she should be gay. She should be a lesbian. If you, if Disney generally wants to include LGBT plus community the way that they say they do, they would be ballsy and do something like that. Have the offspring of your biggest iconic character be just wanting all these bitches. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't like the drawing that I did in that video. I can draw, I can feel like I could draw it better, but I can't be asked right now. On top of that, just having any offspring of Mickey Mouse come into realisation of, you know, what their dad is like. Trying to come to terms with living with a famous dad because there are stories like that out there. And, you know, that could be hard for kids. You know, children of celebrities, that could be difficult, can't it? Feel like unintentionally her mum and dad are putting pressure on her to carry on the legacy when she probably doesn't want to. Or she can find out about her uncle, Uncle Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, and what her dad technically did to him. If you've seen the Epic Mickey games, you know what Mickey did in order for Oswald to get into the situation that he's in. And, you know, this, this offspring could just be like, whoa. 
I need to go save my uncle. And you've got an epic story right there. I don't understand why this hasn't been fought before. Or maybe it has. And Disney was like, we're not doing that because Mickey's offspring can't get bitches. <laughs> Number 10, make a Gertie the Dinosaur movie. Make it a la Marley and Me, which is depressing. Gertie the Dinosaur is one of the first cartoon characters or cartoon animations out there ever. He was one of the first ones, or she was one of the first ones to be the most popular out there and gain quite a public attraction because of the interaction that um, Windsor McKay did with this animated character. He will basically put on a circus performance with this dinosaur character. And she's obviously super old now, but because Toons can't die, if Toontown was a real place like it was in Roger Rabbit, Gertie would still be existing somewhere, just this massive stegosaurus dinosaur being around somewhere. Either the creators or any animators want to look after her, or maybe the characters, the cartoon characters themselves, you know, like Felix the Cat and then Mickey or Oswald or anyone like that, they can take turns in looking after this dinosaur. You know, this is this massive dinosaur that had this great gig in the 1910s. She's not in anything anymore. She's only known for that one short anime film. All the characters in Toontown look after her in the meantime as if she's just this big giraffe. And this is their life. This is her life until the modern day. And just show that. And it, it, it reminds me a lot of the Marley and Me story because it's just showing the life of this dog. You don't have to have the super sad ending where Gertie will have to be put down or anything like that. You don't have to do that because she's a toon. But she wouldn't have been forgotten like Oswald because she is that iconic in history so that's why she's she's probably going to be still around i feel like it will, there'll be a lot of great respect for this dinosaur character if something else was made for her also we haven't really had any good dinosaur movies recently think about it since jurassic park or the land before time made in the 80s what good <laughs> what good dinosaur films have been made I'm, i wasn't really into the good dinosaur it was good that's it we, we deserve a better dinosaur movie and it should be really about the first dinosaur that was ever drawn number 11 even though gertie dinosaur was technically one of the first uh drawn characters to gain public attraction really the one we most remember is felix the cat he had the most audience interaction he had a lot of cartoons not just one cartoon based on him. He was definitely one of the first iconic uh, characters you could think of before Mickey or Bugs or anyone else came to, came into view. But Felix the Cat has an interesting backstory, especially in terms to his creator, Pat Sullivan. Pat Sullivan was put into jail for not as long as he should have, like definitely less than a year, maybe even only a few months for doing inappropriate things to a minor. He's an absolute piece of scum and apparently there are a few essays out there that say that he didn't actually make the character Felix the Cat or maybe he did but somebody else was animating or taking charge of all the cartoons but they'll put Pat Sullivan's on name on the cartoons anyway. If <laughs> if Toontown was real like in the Roger Rabbit movies if they live among us how would Felix feel about having an absolute shitty person as a father or as a creator what would he think maybe he would hate toontown and run away and live somewhere in europe or in japan maybe he would live in japan because they made an anime about felix the cat and that was one of the last things that they made regarding felix the cat so maybe felix the cat is still living in japan maybe he never wants to discuss it maybe he's traumatized by it Maybe he needs help to let everything go and come to terms with it. It's if you're somebody that has a shitty parent who is in jail or has done something absolutely despicable, it's hard to come to terms with that because at one point you have great memories of being of this parent and being with them and spending time with them. It's just absolutely fantastic. And on the other hand, they've done an absolutely awful thing. How would Felix feel about all the things that Pat Sullivan did. If you actually want to read the history of Pat Sullivan, it's on the internet somewhere. I came up with this idea watching Saving Mr. Banks. Now, Pat Sullivan is a much, much, much more awful person than, you know, the P.L. Travis's father ever would be, as far as I'm aware, according to the Saving Mr. Banks movie. But just having Felix the Cat hate everything 
and then the the friends he has in Toontown, which he might not consider his friends, but they consider him being their friend, just helping him out, getting him through everything. And I feel like it's just an emotional story can be written from that story plot, from that base, from that history point, actually. You know, it's a piece of history. You know, the things that Pat Sullivan did actually happened. I feel like it could be interesting because in animation, everyone thinks that everyone's just the nicest person because you're making things for... Not all the time, obviously it's adult animation, but everyone assumes you're making things for children and so it's a very innocent platform. It's not. There are a lot of shitty people out there working in the animation industry. But we can explore that through film. I mean, that's what a film is, is there for. Maybe we could explore it through one of a very iconic character. I mean, we could see where it goes. Number 12. Make anything with Bendy and Ink Machine or Cuphead. I know they're making a Cuphead show. I don't know when it's coming out. Let me have a look. Hang on, it's already out. I have not seen this. Hold on. Holy shit, this is already a thing. Right, scratch that. Scratch the point. Well, not scratch it entirely. Okay, so I knew they were making a Cuphead thing, but I didn't know it was already released. I thought it might have been only released on an American Netflix. It's on the UK Netflix, and I didn't know. All right, so that's there. We got a Cuphead thing, and I'm going to watch it later. That's fine. We got this. Okay, so Bendy and the Ink Machine. Let's make something with Bendy and the Ink Machine in it. Because that could be really interesting. I know it's cringy now, because a lot of children are playing it the same way they're playing Five Nights at Freddy's. But you can make a good thriller or horror movie out of this premise okay so in terms of possibly making an adaptation onto the screen in 2020 Derek Kolstad I'm hoping I hope I'm pronouncing that right creator of the John Wick franchise stated he has interest in making a television adaptation based on the game and nothing has really happened since then in terms of bringing it to the screen just somebody saying that they're interested which could be cool you know, John Wick is actually pretty cool. If we wanted to bring Bendy and the Ink Machine into the Toontown fandom or the Toontown franchise, we could have this spooky, you know, the spooky studio, the haunted studio. Instead of just a, the main human character, the old animator going back in to look for these clues or to look for Bendy. I can't remember the premise of the game anymore. I'm so sorry. It could be Mickey, Bugs, Benny Boop, Felix, whatever. It could be those guys going into the house and they could have known Bendy and they could have been friends with Bendy and Alice and all those characters. All these cartoon characters should have connections. And number 12. I've already said number 12, number 13. The last point. Make a Christmas special with all of them. I don't know what you do. I'm sure it's going to be wholesome, nice, Christmassy, and has a lot of snow in it, even though it doesn't snow around Christmas anymore. But make a Christmas special with all the cartoon characters, because the spirit of Christmas might bring all the studios together to put aside their differences, and we can make something similar to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Like I said, I'm not a professional writer. I haven't been in the animation industry since I graduated in 2019, but I feel like some of these ideas that I think of and what other people think of, are they, they're better than what Hollywood has already made. And I feel like we can do so much more if just a bit more thought and effort has been put into it. Will any of these ideas that I thought of ever be put on screen or will they collaborate to make another Who Framed Roger Rabbit-esque movie where all the characters are together? No, probably not. Money is a thing and I don't think they're willing to sacrifice those monies or those rights or anything like that to make something similar to Who Framed Roger Rabbit again. But I don't know, maybe they can prove me wrong and I hope they prove me wrong because it'd be awesome to see some of these ideas be brought into light. You know, just, just ideas better than Space Jam 2. And now I'm going to go watch the Cuphead show, which I didn't know existed until right now. <laughs>